have a question. Yes. Uh, Mr. Harry, could you talk for a moment on the benefits and pitfalls of pushing the development and the process faster than how Moore's Law is evolving around you? From the standpoint of economics and finances, and, and, and when do you take the risk and when don't you take the risk? Uh, our risk was not, our risk was very simple. The flash was way too expensive. We couldn't get people to pay, I mean, like I said, initially $50 per megabyte, so that's, you know, to store one today's picture, four megabyte, you would need $200. Of course, there's no way. It, when, when we started, I, I went, I met a guy at uh, HP, and they had, <coughs> HP had a skunk team to develop digital cameras and to do to digital cameras with digital cameras to Kodak what they did with uh, printers. So the guy that ran their business division, developed their business, was put in a skunk team. And he says, look, uh, I don't care, you know, I don't want to hear about $50 per megabyte. I want 24 pictures, digital pictures, in my camera for $399. Not $399, $3.99. Because <laughs> that's what Kodak charges for 24 picture roll of them. And I said, well, we are at $100 now, so you're asking basically for 25 times lower. I'll come here in two or three years. <coughs> we'll do that. And we did, of course. We did, over the time, you know, 100,000 times, not 25 times lower cost. So, so we were always driven by getting the cost down fast enough to obsolete, to disrupt a competing mechanical device. And that's how... Uh, we have waves and waves of disruption, which were driven, which were driven by. Uh, uh, and on top of that, of course, we had Intel and Toshiba and. So, just just a comment. Um, from the manufacturing point of view, um, this 16 generation and all, faster and more small, started because they're behind. So, for the first uh, probably until about 2005 and six, they're just catching up with new. And then once they pass DRAM, uh, then the structure of NAND is much more amenable to special lithography tricks. And so that those are the two elements that sort of breaks the traditional MOS law. In the old days MOS law is new equipment, you have to have a new step. But in this the case of NAND, at the beginning they're catching up. After that, they are doing you know, all the little trick as independent equipment. So that's why they pass. Now, for us, as a small company, we didn't have, we were a fabulous semiconductor company, so the, the economics are terrible. To be in memory and fabulous, to compete with guys that had Fab 3, Fab 4, five, 517, I mean, uh, so we had to be very aggressive on MLC. We started developing MLC from day one, because that was a 2x cost reduction that we would have to neutralize the fact that we didn't we didn't own our wafers, wafer fund. It's only when we signed uh, with Toshiba on a 50-50 you know, captive NAND. But, but the guy that really drove uh, Moore's Law uh, scaling with NAND were really uh, Samsung. Samsung was unbelievably aggressive at uh, Dr. Wang, and the guy was nuts. I mean, he said, I'm gonna double every one year, and we were gonna be dr driven out of business if we didn't. Luckily, they didn't believe in MLC. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, what the first system looked like. Um, this, uh, the, the, you are looking at uh, a two 2.5 inch standard. This was a corner peripheral plug and play replacement. You unplug the corner, you plug our device, and the computer wouldn't know that there's a difference except it was faster and, and quieter, of course. On the right is the is a controller, the back side of the controller, and it, I think it has an Atmel chip there. Um, but basically, for the firmware, I think. But uh, so the right was basically a, a seventy-dollar controller, and on the left is two cards. You can see at the bottom there's a little bit sun disk. It's a flap that IBM told us, you know, put that in. It's a sticker thing, and that's how you pull it out, and it worked. Anyway, twenty megabyte was a thousand dollars. It was full ATA compatible, two and a half inch. Our first customer was Grid, Gridpad, and the second one was IBM. IBM placed in order for 10,000 ThinkPad, uh, 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 sorry, uh, 10,000 of the 20 megabyte 
SSDs, uh, which we developed, by the way, at AT&T at uh, Allentown. And uh, when we, we built the first 5,000, uh, five million dollars, it's huge. I mean, our to previous year, our total revenues were three million dollars. Here we have one customer with, with a $10 million order. And they, I pick up the phone and they say, we've, we've killed the ThinkPad. That was the first pen computer. It was eight pounds. It was beautiful. It was pen writing. First ThinkPad because it was a pad. But, uh, but they couldn't sell any of them. And uh, they said, uh, well, we're constantly programmed. Don't ship us the, the 5,000 that you have purchase ordered or purchase order is canceled. I was on the next plane, of course, and I explained to them what would happen to them if we went out of business because of them. So they they kept us. They took the orders, and then we bought it back, <coughs> ten cents on a dollar. Uh, but uh, but we had this experience with with all the early adopters. Uh, but we kept shrinking not just the chip, but also scaling everything. That controller went to one chip, and then a smaller chip. It's now under twenty cents. It's thirty-two bit. Uh, you know, um, risk processor, 3,000 times faster, and, you know, everything became smaller. And, and, that, and then that card was too big, so I think next one here, we're going to. <coughs> okay, so.